All right, ladies, welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. Uh, I wanted to take a quick second to share uh, something. I'm always trying to come up with new ideas for uh, YouTube videos, and I'm doing projects and things that you guys can follow along with. And the other day I was redoing my sprinklers, and I thought, should I be filming this? Like, I don't know. You guys let me know. Is that something that's interesting to you? I think if, I'm, if I use it as an excuse to just be like constantly putting up regular content, I know it would help with the algorithm, more people would find this. We'd have a lot more fun uh, discussing things down in the uh, the comment section. But I'm confident that watching me replace a valve is not all that interesting. But th so I started thinking, like, what's interesting? And I'm I'm confident that a lot of other people don't own uh, nearly uh, you know 80 watches. So let's let's talk about that for a second. I'm I'm always interested in hobbies that pay for themselves, the things that you can uh, get into for not a lot of money, and then you know have some fun, uh, and you know pass the time, meet people, that kind of a thing. So um, watches was that for me. I I was spending a lot of time in China, and the occasional Sunday would pop up that I was available. Or, you know, didn't have to actually be in the factory. Well, you're normally working really long hours. Uh, while you're there, you're trying to make the best use of the company's time and stuff. But occasionally the factory would go down on a Sunday, the, the factory workers are like, we've had enough, we're taking the day off. And so I'd have some free time and I'd, I'd go into town, you know, maybe working on my Mandarin or trying to, you know, at least experience their culture and not be a you know, complete um, a-hole Americans. So in China, uh, more specifically, the areas in and around Shenzhen or uh, Wajang Bay or the SEG market, depending on what you want to call it, uh, some of these places have some of the world's best uh, fakes. I mean, and not just fakes, they've got uh, real watches or, you know, watches like uh, this one is, I mean, it's not trying to be anything except maybe it's styled after something that I'm not familiar with. And then it's got its own um, uh, labeling here as uh, for scone, right? But if you like this look, the, the typeface and maybe having, you know, something you throw a NATO strap on, uh, these are cheap. I mean, you can get these things for two dollars sometimes, and so you get to try on a lot of different things uh, for for not a lot of money. And then they also have a thing. I'm trying to think if I have a good example called like a third shift watch, or at least that's what I, I'm calling them. And this is where a manufacturer. I'll, I'll pick on the fossil. I don't. I'm not saying this is actually a, a gift from the wife, so that she got stateside. But let's let's say that these fossils were being produced in China, and. That doesn't say on the back, but uh, it might have in the uh, the literature that came with it. But let's let's say this is being made in and around Shenzhen or Dongguan, and some industrious uh, folks have, they've got the list, they've got the bill of materials, they know how to make this, they've been making it for months, and they know who to go to to get the piece parts. Right, that that's their job to get the piece parts for Fossil to have these things produced. If Fossil is only running a first and second shift, there's a swing shift that's where, the, where the, the factory is dormant, right? It's, it's, it's sitting there waiting for the morning shift to come in. So sometimes they will keep that up and running. Sometimes they tell the workers, sometimes they don't tell the workers, but they input into the line fresh material that they've sourced and they've paid for. They're not going to tell Fossil about it. And they will build this thing to spec just like they do all the other legit Fossil watches. Now, if they if, if Fossil has some sort of mechanism where the serial number needs to be serialized and uh, unique, and somebody to check that, uh, you know, they would they went, might make these and not put a serial number on, or they'd make many many of them with all the same serial number because as you're buying this in the market, you're or the the gray market there, you're just looking for a good deal. You're not going to like cross reference this serial number or call up Fossil to see if they you know it's, it's a legit one. It's just not happening. And there's some of these fakes uh, in this category that are so good that if you if you're buying expensive watches when you start getting into like the five and ten thousand dollar range or higher uh there are some of these that are so good that they can't be determined just by looking at it a professional somebody that, that sells these for a living can't tell you whether this is a legit one or not by inspecting it externally they have to crack it open and get information from the inside of the watch and then check it in a database to see if this was a, a legit uh, watch. So there's those. Those are fun to find. And that's also part of the thing uh, that I ended up searching for. And I would set out and create different challenges for myself. Like sometimes I'd get on a kick and I'd be off trying to find like the thinnest watch I could find. And so I didn't really, these, some of these are not my style. Like I don't care about what is Armani? What is this? I don't know. Um, you know, some of these are not my style per se, but I was after the thinnest 
from here to there. Or sometimes I could go and try and find the tallest watch I could find, you know, um, some were, some were goofy. I saw one that was a Nixie tube, but it was standing up this way, and it would tell you what time it was. It was goofy. It was just gaudy. We're supposed to, I think it was supposed to be you know, something you'd show off with at the nightclub. Or sometimes I'd try and find ones that had this uh, losaceous loop or whatever you call these things. I liked these for a while because they didn't pinch my skin or pull out my hair and stuff. Uh, again, Skagen, an actual legit watch just not purchased in China. Uh, so I've got a mix of things. I've got you know, some, some get retired because they're broken. Um, and I've got to get around to fixing that if I care to. These are great watches, the Skagens, but they're not, uh, they're good quality watches, the Skagens, but they're, they're not too expensive. Uh, here you can see a little paper clip. I had these hanging up in my office for a while. These were, this is one of my daily drivers, hence the braking. Um, and I, I'm, I'm mean to my watches. I'm, I'm not very, because I've, I've got a lot of them and I also, um, uh, I don't like to have things that I have to baby. Uh, I will rock these things until I break them. Uh, some of my other daily drivers, are these guys right now, along with the one I'm wearing. Um, they happen to be swatches. Uh, I got on a swatch kick for a while, and we'll talk about that some more in a bit. Uh, but these are some of my daily drivers, like a nice solid white one. This one's really beat up, and I kind of like it for that. Um, and then some goofy colorful ones. I'll wear this one when I've got like a bright shirt that I want to kind of go along with. Uh, and here's another one that's really tall from the side. And a unique face, too. This one the the hour hand moves around and then the or sorry the the minute hand moves around and then the hours are revealed by a little window here yeah that one's definitely a fun one uh another daily driver is uh, a bremont watch that i wear uh, a gift from the wife some, some of the nicest watches i've had have been gifts actually once once people know that you're into watches they'll they tend to uh buy you watches as gifts um, or as uh, parting gifts as this one was. Beautiful watch. I've worn this a few times. I'm trying to give this one some, as a gift, I want to wear it. You know what I mean? I don't want to just like lock it away. And, and it's, it's so, so clean and so nice that you almost don't want to wear it. Um, but it's, uh, it's gone out with me a number of times. And this one's got some really awesome movements that you can see. You can see some of the pieces. That's another thing uh, before we finish talking about the Braemont. The, um, there's only a handful of movement makers in the world. And so if someone says, oh, that's a fake watch. The, what, I mean, what's to say, what, what's fake? I, I understand, like, in, for my definition, a fake watch is one that is trying to pass itself off as uh, something that it's not in order to scam someone or meaning like you make them pay market value for that type of watch and then you find out that it's not or the kind of goofy one is you know someone's trying to like show off and flex and they they bought you know something like a rolex or something like that actually that's some i think that's some some folexes around here um again this was in my thin watch phase i wasn't i'm not the type of person that's going to try and rock a, a rolex necessarily and you can see they're really really cheaply made they're just held in there by like a plastic ring and this is like forced fit in there um but yeah, you know, they're interesting, and you get a chance to try a style that you didn't, you wouldn't normally try. Um, so, yeah. So the, the Braemont's an up-and-coming company. They have been in a number of movies. They've got some decent marketing going around. Really, uh, skook them, if you will. Uh, watch. Same thing here. This, this has got to be one of the more expensive watches that I own. And again, I would have never bought it for myself. It was a gift from the wife, and I love it, love it, love it. Uh, and I wear it almost daily, and I'm mean to it. Guys, trust me when I tell you, like, I, I've banged this thing up against walls and, uh, you know, hit it with tools and things, and it's uh, it's taken a licking to take someone else's uh, marketing campaign slogan. So, um, love that one. Also, the G-Shock, this has been, you know, in, in and out of a number of uh, situations with me. Gone through a few bands. Uh, these are the kind of things that you can run over with a Humvee and they'll survive. Uh, and I think it still has the same battery in here from what's got to be, I don't know, 2005 or something there's no way like, I, just, I just do not remember replacing the battery on this thing uh since then um or ever these are decent decent little daily drivers but you, you've got to get you i've got these dainty uh wrists so i've got to be careful about what you know types of w watches i can wear uh this is at the upper limit of what i can get away with on my wrist so I also got into swatches. These are not swatches. These are just some sort of like retro throwback uh, thing. And uh, I saw them, thought they were awesome. And then I realized that actual swatches are a little bit smaller, uh, like some of the some of the classic ones. There you go, like uh, this one. You see that the size difference here? 
Uh, but I, I bought a number of these for a friend. Uh, she was really into this style, uh, and I like them. I've not actually, you can tell I've not worn these. They're like stiff as all get out, just sitting here. Um, but I like the style. Like They're kind of fun with these uh, skulls and stuff. And like These were intended to make you think of the ones from the 80s, and I was like, oh, it's kind of, kind of a bummer. Um, so then I started buying watches that were actually from the 80s. The swatches, I, I got I got really into the style of them, the, the design. Uh, they In their production, they were going after it as a fashion accessory, not as a tool necessarily. So the idea was, you know, and, and smartly so for a company that sells watches or sells anything, is making people want to come back and get this year's season, you know, this seasonal uh, style, what was going, what was hot right now. Uh, I'm trying to look for some other ones. So there, there, there's, a, there's a few swatches that are out there that are on the rare side because they maybe they did a run of a thousand. People bought them, used them, tossed them after they didn't work anymore, and the, there's a few left of a, a certain ones. So they, they can get very pricey, the, the swatch watches. And it's outside the, outside the range of what I'm interested in doing for, for a hobby. And so what I started doing was purchasing lots, meaning, or uh, what do the British people call them? Uh, that's what it was, job lot. So it, and if you're searching on like eBay or something like that and you want to find a bundled group, you know, like uh, a, a fistful of old Swatch watches that someone found in their dad's drawer, you know, or their, their aunt's place, and they're just tossing them up, uh, they're called job lots uh, if you're looking on those sites. Uh, and then in the States, we'll call them bundles or uh, a lot, L-O-T, of, of anything. You know, sometimes they're you know, selling like eight drills and they're all broken or whatever. And uh, sometimes you find these and they're, they're almost always uh, the batteries are dead and people are just trying to like move them on and they're because these things were a fashion accessory for a lot of folks yeah so some of these were uh, fashion accessories and they have uh, a numbering scheme each one of these is labeled by swatch with a certain make and model name and number there's like a marketing name for something you know they call it the the daisy or the i don't know the musical note one or like there's there's some that are commemorative from like uh, different olympic games that happened in like 96 or whatever you got, if you were there you could have bought the watch there and only there at that store for a limited run that kind of thing um now some of them are just plain ugly but uh if you you start to recognize like maybe just this specific part of the band or you might see them all bundle up and you only can see the bottom part or just the face of it right and you can do some research on on that watch if it's if it's the one you're interested in and so long as it's one of the watches in the bundle what, what i tend to do is i will price or bid on that with the price of just the one or two watches that i'm interested in from that lot so that when they come in if they work awesome i've paid for those uh, and then all the other ones the less, at least in my opinion, less attractive ones. Here's another one that's got some really cool. Yeah, there's another one that's got some really cool movements in it. Uh, but it's gold. I, I, I don't, I can't see myself wearing gold. That's why this other one here also um, is, you know, sits in a, a box or in my uh, watch case. It. I can't pull off gold. That's what I'm trying to say. So uh, this one uh, will go up on eBay and. I almost always sell a single watch or two watches out of a, a you know a bundle of eight or ten or more, and it pays for the entire auction uh, that I paid for. So uh, it just perpetually moves on like that, and then becomes a, a hobby that pays for itself. So uh, whether it's uh, watches or or cars or old sewing machines, I don't know. What other kind of things are you guys are you guys uh, collecting, and uh, are they are they paying for themselves? I'd love to hear about it. So if you've enjoyed taking a brief glimpse into what I'm sure is a, a mental illness, uh, and you'd like to see more things like this, make sure that you subscribe so that you can follow along uh, with more of Julian's random projects. So bonus footage at the end will be the sound of all of these watches just sitting on my desk ticking away. It's very annoying <laughs> or cool, uh, depending on who you are.